Hello everyone, so good to be with you this evening. Gonna be a great evening. I just really feel like there's a lot of questions we need to talk about. There's a lot of things that I would like to learn and know about the kingdom of God. Boy, we've been in this thing for weeks, haven't we? A, a, a study of the kingdom and what it means in our life. Now you might say, why is that so important? Because everything that happens in our life flows from that life source. That's the source for your life. That's the source for all of it. And isn't it amazing how we know so little about it? I mean, we just, you know, it's almost like we, we hear all about it. We dream about it, but we don't know anything about it, really. We, we don't. And I, I want to talk for a few moments about that. I'd like you just to join with me and uh, just take a few moments. And let's just, let's just visit about the, the, the kingdom of God and, and how it functions um, you know, I, I've been raised with the idea so much and, and I hate to, I hate to rehash things that we've gone over the last few days, but, but the bottom line is, is that, um, uh, th there's so many launch points is that, that you answer questions that people have, have been asking for a long time and truly didn't know the answer. You know, unfortunately, too much in church, they're answering, they're answering questions that people aren't asking. And we need to know why. We need to know how it operates in our life. What, what is it about the kingdom uh, in relation to us that makes something happen? <clears throat> and I am not interested on any level in listening to this, will you never know? Because I, I don't believe that. I, if, if that's true, then it has completely distorted my view really of who God is and of his faithfulness. I, I don't know that I can really accept the fact that God's unpredictable and, and we're uncertain about what he's going to do and how he's going to do it. And you never know. It's kind of like I said yesterday, you never know when your time's up and it's just, you know, everything's a crapshoot. Every, everything, everything is by chance. And that's simply that is simply a lie that the church has believed for as long as I have lived. And as a result, they've lived apart from the provision that God has. I'm just telling you something. Either it works or it doesn't. Either the, the laws that pertain to life and to uh, the kingdom, either they work or they don't. And if, and if we're going to believe that sometimes they work, sometimes they don't, then really we're, we're not that bright um, to, to be embracing that. I'm, I'm just telling you, it's more than that. God, God in his character never changes. In his laws are predictable. I look around me and I see the laws by which I live, the predictability of life by which I live, and I know that that's, that's a mirror of what God is like. God is, God is faithful. He's consistent. Uh, with him is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. He doesn't even look like he's going to change. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So why the breakdown? Why is it that, why is it that we believe God and sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't? And then we try to make excuses for God. You know, well, you know, maybe God had, you know, and, and immediately we take this, this road, this off ramp into the ditch and sometimes never find our way back. I, 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 I want to challenge you today to receive the fact that when we live by the kingdom, that the kingdom of God is consistent, persistent, never fails, you do this, and this is the this is the results. You know, what many times we we don't allow ourselves to receive something because we won't walk in it. We we don't know it. We don't understand it. Well, God's ways are beyond our ways. His ways are past finding out. I've I've heard that, and it never did fit. It never did sound right. It's it's just 
kind of an excuse as to what people say when they can't figure out anything. But see, you have to understand that this can't be within the framework of just what you know because you don't know very much. I don't know very much. We really don't. I mean, we beat our chest as though we're the smartest thing that ever lived. But quite frankly, we're just in the scratch and sniff stage. We don't know very much. What we know is what God has revealed to us. And when we walk in that, miracles take place. And many times we don't allow ourselves to receive something from the kingdom of God. So we don't walk in it. We, 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 we refuse to walk in it. I mean, what a responsibility that he's placed on us to see things done. You know, we're sitting around saying, God, why don't you do something? And quite frankly, he's already done something. He did something at the cross. He purchased something at the cross. He made you a new creature. He gave you something that, that uh, money can't buy. He gave you position. He gave you authority. You have a position in the kingdom of God. And how you function in this life determines what kind of life you live. You remember Jesus spoke to the woman when he was going to Jairus' house. And he said to that woman, your faith made you whole. Now, he didn't have anything to do with it. I mean, does that make any sense to you? Jesus didn't have anything to do with it. He's just walking along. He's going to Jairus' house. It was like he was caught off guard. He didn't see it coming. But this woman said, if I can but touch the hem of his garment, I know I'm going to be made whole. And Jesus stopped him. He said, who touched me? And when he, when he said that and she was revealed who he was, he said to her, be of good cheer, your faith made you whole. So somehow you operated in such a way that your belief connected to the kingdom of God and brought a miracle into your life. Well, it should be that way every time. Now, I believe that Jesus, when he prayed for something, that things took place. Now, of course, there was extenuating circumstances, such as when people got in unbelief, the Bible said when he went to his own hometown, he couldn't do many mighty things because of the way they perceived him, and they became a block to God doing something in their life. But see, you have to understand, your belief is, the, is, is connected to the floodgate of your heart. Your heart is a floodgate. Your heart is something that allows... Uh, uh, the, the flood of the world of the spirit to come into the world of the natural. The floodgate isn't someplace else. It's in you. The miracle is in you. It's the part of you that opens or closes the door that controls the floodgate. See, you hold dominion in heaven and you hold dominion in earth. And this is something I kind of want to talk to you about because a lot of people can see, well, maybe I have dominion in earth but they can't believe that they actually have dominion in heaven. Think about that. Would, would you for a moment just pause and allow yourself to go there? Would you allow yourself just to receive for a moment that says, I have been given dominion on this earth, but I have been also given dominion in heaven. So that's the wonderful place that you hold. You're not just some sinner saved by grace. You're not just kind of hanging out, waiting until you get to heaven. Man, I'm just going to tell you something. You've been seated with him in heavenly places in Christ. Do you understand that? You have a position that affects heaven and that affects earth. I mean, that's how God created you. You have dominion in both kingdoms. Can you just pause for a second and, and just receive that? I've been given dominion in both kingdoms. I've been given dominion here on this earth, the things around me. God put them under my authority. But God also gave me dominion and a place in the kingdom of God in heaven. I have one foot in this dominion and I have one foot in that dominion because I've been created spirit, soul, and body. My body gives me the access into this dominion. Do you understand? My spirit gives me dominion in that realm. And so 
when I say something, it says something in motion in both places. It's not just on this earth. When you say something, heaven kicks into gear. The power of the Holy Spirit goes into motion. Angels go into motion. See, so you have, you, you, I said, I, I'm saying this over and over. Please forgive me if I'm giving the same examples again and again. And, but I have to say this to, to bear my, my point out is the fact that, that you're, you know, you're a dam. You, you're wet on one side, you're dry on the other. You are spirit and you are flesh. That spirit is the thing that connects you. Your faith connects you to the world of the spirit. Your body connects you to this realm. See, this body, that's the reason for you having the resurrection. Somebody say, why are we going to have a new body? Because this body, when God created this body, is to have dominion in this realm. That body is going to have dominion in every realm that God ever created and ever will create. You will walk in total dominion. It's going to be, it's, it's going to be a, a, a new body. That resurrected body is going to be quite spectacular. But, I, but the thing that I want you to see is that you have dominion in both, in both kingdoms, the kingdom of this world, and you have dominion in the kingdom of heaven. And that dominion has to do with the power and the authority of heaven coming into this earth. Somebody say, well, why doesn't God do something? Now see, and, and this bears out my, my point here. Why doesn't God do something for me? Well, the fact is, he did. He gave you the word of God. He gave you position in heaven as a new creation, as a son, as a daughter, he gave you the authority of the word, the angels of heaven, the word of God. I mean, you, you've been given everything. And now God waits on you to exercise the dominion. Because I guarantee you one thing. Nothing happens in your life that somebody didn't believe God or stand in the gap or intercede or speak a word towards you, something. Nothing has ever happened in this realm without it going through someone just like you. And that's the truth. Nothing. God, God doesn't just show up to everybody's surprise and say, okay, I'm going to do this, this, and this. He doesn't do that. that. Everything he does here, he does through you. Now somebody says, well, why, why didn't God intervene? Well, God did intervene and he gave you the authority and the dominion and basically the lordship in this earth to exercise his word and his power where there's a need. That's why you've been commissioned to lay hands on the sick. That's why you've been commissioned to cast out devils. That's why you've been commissioned to speak the word. That's why you've been commissioned to give to the poor. I mean, everything that God does he does through you. <clears throat> you are the conduit from the world of the spirit to the world of the natural. And not one thing is going to take place in this world except it come through you. Period. That's it. Now that, that's an awesome responsibility. I mean, that's, that, that, is a, that is a lot of responsibility. The the. And because when I say something, I have dominion in heaven and the dominion of heaven backs my words. Angels, like I said, they hearken to me. He said to me, whatever you bind on earth is bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth is loosed in heaven. See, all of heaven is waiting on me. I'm not waiting on heaven. So you have the power of intercession. But listen, if you don't believe that, then what will happen is, is you'll sit around and you'll wring your hands and say, God, why don't you do something? God, why don't you do something? And as a result, you lose out on this. This goes wrong. That never happens. Everything in this life happens on the seed plant harvest principle. And you are the one that sows the seed. You're the one that takes the word into your heart. 
You're the one that acts. You're the one that prays. You're the one that sows. You're the one that speaks. You're the one that binds. You're the one that looses. And when you say something, the dominion that you have as a, as a citizen and an ambassador of heaven goes to work in this earth. And so it's all waiting on you. You're, you're, you're not waiting on it. There are things that are already yours, but you must engage. If you're just sitting around saying, oh God, do something. Oh God, do something. It ain't going to happen for you. I, I'm, well, I, I sure wish God would do something, but I, I don't know why God won't. And, and all the time, we're waiting on God when that's not the pattern that he uses. He doesn't act apart from you. He only acts through you. And so that's why it's important that you know the word of God and you understand the kingdom and that you approach your circumstances with diligence and with, with authority. I'm, I am standing in this earth facing a need and I reach into the kingdom of God and I pull the benefits of the kingdom into this earth, into my need that I might have, whether it be healing. For instance, you remember when the woman came to him and said, heal my daughter? He said, it's not right for me to take the children's bread and cast it to dogs. Well, what that says to me is that healing, which is the, is the reference as to what they were talking about, healing is the children's bread. What children? The children of the kingdom. So the authority of healing or blessing or deliverance or whatever it is, that's, that is yours because you're a child of the kingdom and you bring that into your life through the words that you speak. Even the prayers you pray are important because they're not just prayers of, oh God, I'm just asking you to do this. Now, we do pray bread down through intercession for someone else. We do pray that the Lord would send laborers into the harvest. We pray for that. But when it comes to our life, we're not just praying God come and do something. God says he wants you to speak the word, to not be moved by your circumstances. Uh, Romans chapter four talked about Abraham. And it said, Abraham, please God by his faith. It said, it said, when all natural hope was gone of Abraham being the father of many nations, he hoped on in faith. And he didn't consider the deadness of his body, nor yet the circumstances that were wrapped up in Sarah's inability to have children. He wouldn't even consider that. But he had faith in God. And he embraced what God said to him, and that empowered him to become what God said he was going to become. So that being said, that Abraham wasn't just praying, oh God, come and do this. God gave him a word, and from that time forward, his response to that word was, this is who I am. My name is not Abram, but my name is Abraham. I will not consider the fact that this is going wrong on this side. I embrace what God said, and I call it done. I, I, I call those things like God does, which be not as though they were. I stand on the word of God. I proclaim. I, I rebuke. I bind. I loose. I speak a creative word. I sow the seed. I plant. See, everything that you get in your life from the kingdom of God comes through you as the conduit. And this is why most of the time people, people sometimes they get it, sometimes they don't. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. The bottom line is because they never take responsibility for, um, for, for the action. That they never are willing to say, this is what the word said, I speak that. Kind of like Jesus spoke the end result to the tree. No man will eat fruit from you from this day forward. Wow. 
See, that's how you need to approach everything. How could he say such a thing? How, how could Jesus say something? Because when he said it, it initiated heaven in his behalf. When he declared it, and then he went on his way. That was the most amazing thing. He didn't even pay attention to it anymore. We're constantly looking over his shoulder. Well, I wonder if it worked. I wonder if it worked. I remember as a little boy, one time I was at a little school project and I was planting something. They had the, the, the little cups that they had soil in and we'd put a seed in there. And I left it and nothing and nothing and nothing. And I'll never forget. I mean, I would look at it and wonder. Finally, I dug it up to see, is the seed even there? I mean, that's what we do. We're sitting there and we really don't know that anything's going to come up. We'll dig up the seed. I mean, we, we just have not responded to, to how the, the principle of the kingdom of God. And so as a result, the prayers don't work. Our, 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 I don't want to say our faith, but it's actually our lack of faith. It's, it's, it's our unbelief that has hindered the word of God from working our life. So that's what Jesus dealt with when he went to his own hometown. The Bible said that he... He, that he couldn't do anything because of their unbelief. Now see, unbelief is not no belief. Unbelief is, I don't believe that, I believe this. That's unbelief. See, so you believe something. You believe something, you either believe God can do it or you believe he can't. And often we'll, we'll approach God with a need that we have, but we talk to him like we don't believe he can. We're not sure he will. See, you have to understand that it's our response to the kingdom of God that allows the kingdom to flow through us. Your will. Maybe that would be a good way to put it. Your will. You know, the Bible said that, uh, he said that Jesus, I stand at the door and knock. If any man will open to me, I'll come in and I'll sup with him and he with me. Well, that's an interesting statement. What door is he talking about? The door is the door of your will. You have, to, you have to open the door of your will to him because the door of your will, that's the gateway of what you allow in or don't allow in. So, the, you know, when, when, we, when we don't open our heart to it, then it doesn't flow through us. But I want to just say to you that it's so important that you realize that, that, that when we're asking for something from the realm of heaven, the gateway that brings it to the place where my needs are met is here, here. This is the gateway. And, it, and I have to take responsibility. God, why don't you do it? He already did. God, why don't, you, why don't you make that happen? He's not going to do it that way. He gave the authority to me. Now I speak the word. Now I make the declaration. Now I sow the seed. Now I'm, I do it in motion. I initiate the flow of heaven into this circumstance. I lay hands on the sick. I speak the word. I break the hold of the spirit of fear from off of someone. I mean, I'm the one that does it. You're the one that does it. And, and so you need to, I, I, I guess the thing I've, I've been stalled up on, because the last couple of days I was talking about this, and I, I just felt like there was a, a point that, that needed, I needed to spend a little bit of time on. And that is the point that you have to understand that unless you as the conduit do this, it won't be done. And if it does come into your life, it isn't because God just said, I'm just going to go show up in their behalf. It's because someone prayed. Someone used their authority. Someone spoke the word. Somewhere that became the gateway for God to do something in this realm. And that's just the, that's the vehicle he uses. And apart from that, uh, it ain't going to happen. 
And, and you can tell that by looking around. How much destruction do you see around the world? Have you ever seen these non-believers? These, well, I say non-believers. Have you ever seen these people who don't believe in God? And they'll, they'll make the statement like, how can you say there's a God when there's all of this destruction, when there's that took place over there, when there was these hurricanes that came and the floods? Why didn't God do something? We, we all know about those questions. And, and it's really easy just to simply say, well, you know, we just don't ever know why. But the bottom line is, is that God's not, God, God isn't controlled by tragedy. God is not moved by tragedy. God's moved by faith. If God was moved by tragedy, now think about this. If God was moved by tragedy, then it wouldn't be long until Satan controlled all of his movement, because with his influence in the world, he calls a tragedy here, a tragedy over there, a tragedy up here, until finally he's got God hopping around all over the place. God's not moved by tragedy. He was already moved by tragedy. He was already moved by the, by, by the pain of lost men, and that's the reason we have the cross. But what God is moved by is faith. What God is moved by are the words that you speak. What God is moved by is the declarations you have. You are a king and a priest. Kings make decrees. When's the last time you made a decree over your finance? I'm not talking about, oh, Lord, bless me. I'm talking about making a decree over your finance and then walk in line with it with corresponding actions. And again, Faith without corresponding actions is dead being alone because it doesn't have anything to walk out. If it doesn't have corresponding actions, then what's faith there for? It just, just is there. So to, to, put, to put faith in motion, you have to have corresponding actions to it. But, but see, that's what God's looking for. So when's the last time you made a decree and had corresponding actions about your finance, about your health, about your, I, I remember my brother Jimmy one time, uh, this was so many years ago and uh, had an interesting, because man, I'll tell you, he was, he was embracing the word. And uh, matter of fact, I, I put that little story in a book uh, on patience that I wrote, but Jimmy had hurt his back. He was working for a construction company and he had hurt his back and <laughs> He said he was in such bad shape that he couldn't, literally couldn't stand up. And I don't know if you ever had a hurt back, but boy, I'll tell you, it can put you on the ground just about quicker than anything that you can imagine. And uh, he said he was believing God for it and speaking the word over it. And finally, one day he said, you know, because he started making excuses as to why he couldn't work and couldn't do this. And he made a statement. He said, a well man doesn't lay here like this. A well man's not making excuses. A well man gets up and goes to work. <laughs> now, that's just where he was. And so, man, he struggled. He got it together and he went to work. And all of a sudden, boom, it happened. He said he had this, if I remember the story correctly, he had this big sack of seed or something like that. He threw up on his shoulder. He said the pain was totally gone. But the fact is, he had corresponding actions to what he believed, to what he, he, he said something and he did something that set his faith in motion and gave his faith something to do. So, so you have to understand that we can sit around and wait on God to come and do something, but that's not the way it works. The way it works is you have corresponding actions and you do something because I have dominion not just in this earth, I have dominion in heaven right now, right now. Now, I know that there's people who would say, oh, how could you say something like that? Because when I say something, heaven goes into action for me. You understand? When I say something, our heavenly father responds by backing up that word. When I say something, angels go into action in my behalf. 
again, I've probably given this scripture to you um, a dozen times over the last couple of weeks, but it's just as an example, it's just too hard to, to not use this, where the Bible said that the angels excel in strength, hearkening to the voice of his word. Well, we're the one that gives voice to his word. You understand that? Just you have your Bible laying there and it's not going to speak a thing. Nothing is going to happen. Put that thing up on the cabinet. It's just, it's just going to lay there. But it's when you begin to speak the word that you give voice to what God said and the angels are commissioned to, they excel in strength, responding to the voice of his word. See, but you do that. So I, I want to say you have authority there. When you say something, heaven responds. Whatever you bind on earth is bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth is loosed in heaven. See, a lot of people, they're even afraid to say that because they really, it's hard for them to even say that, that they're the righteousness of God in Christ. To, to most of them, they're just an old sinner saved by grace. To most of them, they're just an old dog and, and they're not even sure they're gonna make it to heaven when they die. They won't know until they get there. I mean, that's a mindset that has literally robbed the body of Christ until it's, it's, it's heartbreaking. But I wanna say this to you. God has commissioned you with his word and the power to bring that word to pass is the kingdom of God. Therefore, when I use that word, I have the authority of the kingdom working in me. It's waiting on me. I'm going to say something. Heaven is waiting on me. And that's something that I can see the father with a smile on his face going, go boy, say it. Come on, declare it. God, <laughs> God's excited about you doing something with the authority that he's given you. But if you're just kind of sitting around here thinking, well, the only reason I'm here is just, well, I don't even know why I'm here. And I'm just, I'm just waiting to die and go to heaven so I can walk on the streets of gold and dangle my feet in the river of life for a thousand years. If that's your mindset, then, then maybe you need to go on. I, I doubt. I doubt seriously he's going to let you dangle your feet for a thousand. He's probably going to put you in school and put you to work. I mean, that's probably what will end up happening to you. So the fact is, well, when I get to heaven, I'm going to have authority over the devil, and he ain't even going to be there. Are you kidding me? This is where the dominion is needed. This is where the power is needed. Come on, stop making excuses for God and start standing up and declaring, this is mine because he did it for me. I have authority on this earth. I have dominion on this earth. I have dominion in heaven. In both realms, I carry a position. And it's not a position without authority. Have you ever seen somebody work for a place and they had a title, but it was an empty title? <laughs> they, they couldn't do anything with it. See, that's not the way it is. You have a title. You have a position in heaven, and it carries dominion. Now, your stewardship is not in heaven. Therefore, you're not trying to get things done there. You'll do that eventually. Your commission is here as the body of Christ. See, we're not the bride of Christ. The bride of Christ is going to be made up of everybody that David's going to be in the bride. Abraham's going to be in the bride. Everybody. But on this earth, we are the body of Christ. Now, I'm not going to take time to go into all the scriptures on that. You can look that up yourself. But we're the body of Christ, and we have a commission while we're here to do something as the body of Christ to fulfill John 3.16. That's my commission. So I have authority here. Where do I get my authority? my position there. Now, when I get there, I promise I'm going to have a position. I'll have authority in heaven. I'll, I'll have that. Uh, I'm going to have a place. God's got things for me to do. I've got places, man. I'm, 
I don't even, I, it's, <laughs> it's one of those things, your heart's bigger than your mouth. I, I know it's going to be something there and I'm going to be busy. I'm going to be doing, I'm going to be dominating. I'm going to be creating. I'm going to be running. I'm, I, I can't wait to see what's going to take place, but that's then. Here is where my commission is. So I, I want to just say that my commission here is empowered by my position there. My commission is empowered by my position in heaven. My authority that I carry in heaven. Man, think about it. Will you, will you just dare allow yourself to go there for a minute? It'll change the way you act. It'll change the way you walk. I'm an ambassador of heaven. I'm in this earth because I'm colonizing this area while I'm here. I've got a responsibility and I have all the forces and all the power and all the resources of heaven to empower me to accomplish what God assigned me to do. God never gives you a job to do without empowering you to do it. Can you imagine <laughs> can you imagine the guys in our uh, in our military, I could use uh, the Navy, Air, Air Force might be a better one because I could say, you know, they get a commission from, from, from the president of the country to go do this. But the president says, oh yeah, by the way, you need to go and get you a jet plane. He doesn't do that. You know what he does? He provides what you need to accomplish your stewardship. Does that make sense to you? God's not just saying, well, you just going out there. And he equips you with the power of the Holy Spirit. He equips you with the word of God. He equips you with the name of Jesus. He equips you with the angels of God. He equips you with everything you need. That's the, that is, that's the power of understanding your position in him, in the kingdom. Man, I'm just going to tell you something. That'll make you fearless in what you face. I'm not putting up with this nonsense. I'm not saying sickness won't try to come. I'm not saying poverty won't try to come. I'm not saying death won't try to come. It'll try to come because it's all around us. Everything around us is dying. I just refuse to receive its authority in my life. My authority comes from heaven. And I'm not going to let some renegade outlaw demon spirit to tell me who and what I am and what's going to happen in me because I'm a citizen of heaven. I'm an ambassador of heaven. And I'm right now operating in my embassy and I'm doing something that uh, needs to be done. And I'm going to break the yokes of, of the enemy. I'm, I'm going to fulfill the ministry of Jesus uh, for the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he's anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, the recovering of sight to, to the blind. I mean, you just go through and read that commission that was given Jesus. That's that same commission that you operate under. I've been commissioned. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because I've been anointed. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because I've been commissioned. Man, that changes your boldness, doesn't it? <laughs> oh, man, I'm telling you. <laughs> what in the world is going to get in our way when we start understanding that? Isn't it awesome? Well, I kept you longer today than I intended to. Thank you for taking so much time with me. I'm going to be back tomorrow. We'll talk some more about that. I, I just wanted to throw this out there to you. I, I, I really felt that, that you needed to enlarge your thoughts thoughts to say just, and, and I maybe you already knew it. That's fine. Not only do I have dominion on this earth, I have dominion in heaven. I have position in heaven. I have position on this earth. This is my commission, but my commission is empowered by my position. It is a good word. It is a good word. Well, I've enjoyed being with you today. I have. What a delight it is. I thank you for taking time with me. If you will look back over the last couple of weeks, 
Now we've got this thing set up to where you can go on YouTube and you can also find these um, all of these teachings. You need to go back for a couple of weeks. If you will do a study with me on the kingdom of God and go through all of these, listen, I promise you it'll revolutionize everything about you. It'll change everything. It will. It'll change everything. It'll change the way you walk. Man, I'm telling you something. You'll, you'll walk. You'll Suddenly, you'll have a swagger to your step, and the enemy will recognize that. He'll recognize that. I guarantee you one thing, and he'll come in one way, and he'll flee seven. Uh, the Word of God has empowered you, and it's time for you to take your place. So let me pray for you. Father, I'm asking right now that you would cause the revelation of who we are, of the position we hold here on earth, of the position we hold in heaven, in the kingdom of God, and how you gave the authority to us to fulfill our commission here. I ask, oh God, that you would make that a rhema word in our heart and encourage, I pray for an impartation of strength and courage and to everyone that hears me, that they will run through a troop and leap over a wall and nothing will by any means hurt them. And I declare it right now in the name that is above <laughs> every name. And that's the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, our beautiful Savior, our glorious King. <laughs> oh, he is almighty. <laughs> Man, he is Almighty, he is powerful, and there's none that can stand against him. Wow. <laughs> I'm so proud of him. Man, I'm so proud of him. Wow. Be encouraged today. Take what belongs to you, and let's go possess it. Please, um... Contact me. You can come to fwcelgin.com. We've got a lot of information there for you, and uh, give you opportunity that you can uh, that you can uh, connect with me if you have prayer requests or if you have something. We've got a lot of resources that are available for you. If if you would like to be part of the giving, uh, God's blessing us. Am I kidding? God's God's blessing our socks off, and uh, it's good ground. If you want to be a part of that. It'll give you an opportunity there that you can do it. Uh, I'm going to ask you please to press like. Uh, and I'm going to ask you also to share. Uh, very easy and it will help us to reach out to, to other feeds that we're not presently connected to. All right? Love you guys. And I'm looking forward to you. I'm going to see you tomorrow evening at 7 o'clock. All right? You have a great evening. God bless you. Sure love you. Bye-bye.